In this video we look at how we can use the concepts of momentum, impulse and restitution to investigate oblique impacts in two dimensions. This is a revision video for the sixth unit of the WJEC for the mathematics specification. Specification says that we should be able to understand and use the ideas of momentum and impulse in two dimensions, making use of vectors. We've already met Newton's experimental law of restitution in the course of Unit 3 of the Further Math specification, and we should remember that the coefficient of restitution is the ratio of the speed of separation to the speed of approach. For an oblique impact with a plane, or with, if you like, a particle or a ball approaching a wall, then the first thing we should do is we should set up some axes with one of the two axes being in the direction of the wall and the other axes being perpendicular to the wall. So in this case I'm going to have the x-axis being horizontally to the right as we look at this and then the y-axis being in the direction of the wall. We then need to express the initial velocity, so the velocity just before the impact, as a vector. So if the initial velocity has component u1 towards the wall and component u2 perpendicular to the wall, then the, the speed of approach of the object towards the wall is u1. Now if just after the impact the object is moving away with velocity v, then again we need to express v in its component form. So the velocity v in this case might be minus v1 v2. Then the speed with which the object is leaving the wall is going to be v1. So it's get the gap between the wall and the object is getting bigger at a rate of v1 meters per second. So the speed of separation is v1. So the coefficient of restitution, speed of separation divided by the speed of approach will be v1 divided by u1. If the wall or plane is smooth, then whilst the particle is in contact with the plane, the reaction of the plane on the particle will be perpendicular to the plane. So that means that the impulse acting on the particle whilst it is in contact with the plane will be perpendicular to the plane. And if the impulse is perpendicular to the plane, that means the, the impulse is acting in the x direction, there is going to be no change in the y component of the momentum and hence no change in the y component of the velocity. In other words, we are saying that v2 must be the same as u2. Now, if we are dealing with an, imp an oblique impact between two spheres of equal radius, then we should start by just drawing a diagram showing the instant of the collision. On this diagram, we start off by putting in the line joining the two centers of the spheres. I'm going to use this line as one of the axes 
for our coordinate system. I usually use it as my x axis. And then the, the y axis will be the perpendicular axis to the x axis. We then need to write the initial and final velocities of each sphere in vector form using these two axes. Now if the, vector, if the two spheres are smooth, then the impulses acting during the collision will be along the line of centers. So that means that all of the changes of momentum must be along the line of centers. In other words, there will be no change in the component of velocity of each sphere perpendicular to the line of centers. We can apply the conservation of momentum and when we do so we will need to concentrate on the part that's telling us what's happening along the line of centers, in other words in the x direction. And we can, use, we can obtain the speed of approach and speed of separation using the components of the initial and final velocities of each sphere and use that to write down a coefficient of restitution equation. So for our first example we're going to consider a particle hitting a smooth for vertical wall. So the particle approaches the wall at a speed of 8 root 2 meters per second and an angle of 45 degrees to the wall. And after the impact, the particle is moving with speed 10 meters per second, as we can see in the diagram. So we have to obtain the coefficient of restitution between the particle and the wall and the impulse acting on the wall during its impact with the wall. So, we need to set up a coordinate system. So we'll use the x-axis as being perpendicular to the wall and the y-axis being parallel to the wall. Now our initial velocity is 8 root 2 meters per second, making an angle of 45 degrees with the wall. And our final velocity is 10 meters per second at an unknown angle of theta to the wall. So using our coordinate system, we can write the initial velocity as 8 root 2 sine 45, 8 root 2 cos 45, in other words, 8, 8. And we can write our final velocity as te minus 10 sine theta, minus, of course, because it's moving in the negative x direction, and 10 cos theta in the y direction. Now, because this wall is smooth, we know that the impulse during the collision is at right angles to the wall. So there's my impulse gone in on the diagram. And because the impulse is entirely in the x direction, there will be no change in the momentum of the particle in the y direction. In other words, there will be no change in the velocity of the particle in the y direction. So that means that we know that the initial component of the velocity in the y direction, which is 8, must equal the final component of the y velocity. So the final component of the velocity in the y direction. So we've got 8 must equal 10 cos theta. In other words, cos theta must be 4 fifths.
And if I know that cos theta is 4 fifths, then simple application of cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1 tells me that sine theta is going to be 3 fifths. So I now know that the final velocity of the particle is given by the vector minus 6, 8. So the coefficient of restitution is going to be the speed of separation divided by the speed of approach. The component of the final velocity in the x direction is minus 6, which means that the particle is leaving the wall at a rate of 6 meters per second. The component of the initial velocity in the x direction is 8 meters per second, which means that originally the particle was approaching the wall at a rate of 8 meters per second. So E is 6 over 8 or 3 quarters. So we can now move on and try and calculate the impulse acting on the particle during the impact. And if we simply use the impulse equals change in momentum equation in its vector form, then the impulse is minus j in the x direction, naught in the y direction, equals the final momentum, so that's 0 0.4 times minus 6, 8, take away the initial momentum, which is 0 0.4 times by the vector 8, 8, which gives me minus 5.60. So I've got minus j equals minus 5.6. In other words, j is 5.6. So the impulse is 5.6 newton seconds perpendicular to the wall. We'll now move on to a second example where we are considering the impact between two equal sized smooth spheres. So we have two smooth spheres A and B of mass 5 kilograms and 3 kilograms which are moving on a horizontal surface and they collide. Immediately before the collision A is moving at 15 meters per second at an angle alpha to the line of centers where cos alpha is 0 0.8 and B is moving along the line of centers with a speed of 10 meters per second as shown in the diagram. We're told that the coefficient of restitution between the spheres is 0 0.5. We have to find the velocity of each sphere immediately after the collision, the impulse exerted by sphere A on sphere B during the collision, and the kinetic energy lost during the collision. So, starting with our initial diagram of showing what happens just before the collision, we will start by defining our axes for all of the vectors. We'll use the line of centers for the x-axis and a perpendicular line for the y-axis. We can now express the initial velocity of A as being 15 cos alpha 15 sine alpha. We know that cos alpha is 0 0.8, so the fact that cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha is always equal to 1 and that alpha is an acute angle tells me that sine alpha must be 0 0.6. So the initial velocity of A is 12, 9. The initial velocity of B is simply 10, unit, 10 meters per second in the negative x direction. So the initial velocity of B can be written as minus 10, 0. Now we draw another diagram to show what's happening during the collision. And during the collision, 
A will be knocking into B, so there will be an impulse from A acting on B, call this impulse I, and there will be an equal but opposite impulse from B acting on A. Now, if the velocity of A after the collision is given by the vector PQ, and the velocity of B after the collision is given by the vector RS, then the fact that we know that the impulse acting on A during the collision is in the X direction only, there will be no change in the Y component of the momentum of A and hence no change in the Y component of the velocity of A during the collision. So that is telling me that the final velocity component of the velocity of A after the collision must be the same as the initial component of the velocity of A in the y direction. In other words, we've got Q must be equal to 9. Now repeating this argument but for the particle for the sphere B, we know that there's going to be the only impulse acting on B is in the X direction, so there's going to be no change in the momentum of B in the Y direction and hence no change in the component of the velocity of B in the Y direction. In other words, that's telling me that zero, that's the initial component of the velocity of B in the Y direction, must equal S, which is the final component of the velocity of B in the Y direction. So we've got S must equal zero. So after the impact, we know the velocity of A is given by a vector P9, and the velocity of B is given by the vector R0. We still need to find the values of P and R. If we start by using the conservation of the momentum for the collision, we can say that the momentum before the collision, or the total momentum before the collision, must equal the total momentum after the collision. In other words, we have 5 times the initial velocity of A, plus 3 times the initial velocity of B, must equal 5 times the in final velocity of A plus 3 times the final velocity of B. Concentrating on the x components of this equation, which is the component along the line of centres, we have 60 at minus 30, so that's 30 equals 5p plus 3r. The y component of this equation in fact isn't going to give us anything very useful, all we're going to get is 45 on the left hand side equals 45 on the right hand side. Our second useful equation comes from considering Newton's law of restitution. So we have E is a half is the speed of the separation divided by the speed of approach. After the collision, B is moving to the right with a speed of R meters per second and A is moving to the right with a speed of p meters per second. So the speed of separation is r 
minus P. Before the collision, along the line of centres, A is moving to the right with a speed of 12 metres per second, but B is moving to the left with a speed of 10 metres per second. So the speed of approach is 22 metres per second. So we've got R minus P must equal 11. We now have a pair of simultaneous equations. We've got 30 equals 5P plus 3R. We've got 11 equals R minus P. And solving those simultaneous equations gives me P equals minus 3 eighths and R equals 85 over 8. So, we now need to find the impulse acting on B during the collision. So if we use impulse equals change of momentum, the impulse as a vector acting on B is the vector I0 equals the final momentum of B, so that's 3 times the vector 85 divided by 8, 0. Take away the initial momentum of B, which is 3 times the vector minus 10, 0. And that gives me 495 over 8, 0. So, the impulse is 495 over 8 newton seconds, or if you like, 61.9 newton seconds. Finally, we have the loss in kinetic energy to calculate. The initial kinetic energy is a half times 5 times 15 squared, since the speed of um, A was initially 15 meters per second, plus a half times 3 times 10 squared, since initially the speed of B was 10 meters per second. So the initial Ke comes out to be 712.5 joules. The final speed of A is the square root of minus 3 eighths squared plus 9 squared, which ends up giving us a square root of 5,193 over 64. So the final kinetic energy is a half times 5 times the final speed of A squared, which is 5193 over 64 plus a half times 3 times the final speed of b squared. Well, the final speed of b is simply 85 over 8. And that final Ke simplifies to approximately 372.2 joules. So during the course of the collision, we have lost some 340.3 joules.